Hi there, welcome to another snippet of DPA Academy and today I'd like to cover the installation process for installing DPA. So the DPA installation process, you will require two virtual machines, which is the recommended starting point. One will act as the DPA application server and the other will act as the DPA data store. The minimum specs are documented in the manuals, but it would be better to use the solutions builder tool for DPA server sizing. The DPA server sizing should ideally be done yearly or biannually. Customers usually grow over the years and also have a lot of latent demand and ordering, onboarding of new projects, new departments, um, acquisitions, etc. So it should ideally be re revisited regularly. There's one installer file for both uh, virtual machines. The installer supports both Windows and Linux, Red Hat Enterprise Linux or SUSE flavors. Please see the DPA compatibility guide for respective Linux supported releases. The installer file also includes an automatic install of the DPA agent for both servers. Please use the same operating system for both virtual machines. And when installing, you would install the DPA data store first and do have the IP addresses of the virtual machines handy for the installation process. So let's jump right to it. Right? Here I've got two Linux virtual machines. Everyone knows Windows is reasonably easy to use as such, but let's do a variation and do a Linux install. This Linux system, I'm using a genome console. Uh, I'll just bring up a typical command line. I have placed the installer file into the temp directory. You will also need to chmod this file to give it execution rights so that you can actually run it. It's a runnable binary. And you can see because this is genome, because this is Red Hat Enterprise Linux, there's some security hardening with the shells. So you need to su into root for root privileges. There we go. We'll go back into temp and we'll try our chmod again. Give it execution rights. There we go. So you can see now it's got those permissions to run. The other thing that I just want to show you that it is also generally good practice to have a separate file system for the opt directory or opt emc or whichever file system you choose to install to but have it separate a different one to the slash operating system the root file system okay just best practices for linux in general then we're going to install now before we install because i have a graphical interface at my disposal i'm going to just hop back out here and a reminder that you do an x host plus to enable connections from the, host, the various hosts or various shells at least i will su to go back in and this time i'm going to export my display to the console this will allow the installer to detect a graphical installer, right? So then when I issue the installer file, like so if you run it directly like this, it will pick up a PuTTY CLI mode install and it will be all text based, which is also fine. All the prompts, all the messages, everything will be in plain text. However, if you want a graphical installer, just put the parameter minus I and the word swing. The installer will automatically detect the console. It'll unpack the files and launch and install graphical wizard, right? And there you have it. This is installation of DPA 19.5 as an example. I'll click next. The typical EULA, you do need to scroll to the bottom of the EULA to accept the terms. In console mode, it'll prompt you for a yes or no. 
then it will ask you where you would like to install and the default is slash opt slash emt slash dpa or you can browse it to another file, file system if you wish i'll keep it the same and i'm installing a data store service first that's what you always do first there it goes so there are a couple of advanced options let's have a look at those so if you wanted for some reason not to register the dpa services you could check that if you did not want it to automatically start you could check that if you wanted to install it with an advanced data store layout you can check that in other words if you've actually provisioned a file system for the data and a separate file system for the logs it will then prompt you for both right and install the agent under an administrative account if you wish right and you can select one or all of these if, if you need to i'll leave it at the defaults and there's the pre-installation summary and go Right, so it automatically detected the, for the data store listing addresses, it automatically detected the network interfaces, right? So you can see DPA does support IP version four or IP version six. So you need to choose which one you're going to use. I'll just stick to IP version four for now. So I'm telling it to listen to on that address. And now to configure data store access, so please enter the IP addresses for all the DPA application service hosts that will connect to this data store. So in other words, what is the IP address of the DPA application server? So that would be the other virtual machine, not this one. Right? So it would be 10.98.60.49.1. And I would add it. It does have provision for multiple DPA application servers, but this that option would require setting up of DPA clustering, which becomes more complicated, and you should not start with that on the get-go. You should always stick to a simple one data store, one application server first. If you need to branch into a cluster or anything else, you can do that after the fact. That said, there are very, very, very few customers that exercise that option. So at this stage, I do not recommend it. Right, you also are is given a option to set up data store replication. So if you wanted a high availability type DR scenario, you can have the data store replicated to another data store if you so wish. But once again, you don't need to do that in the beginning. You can do that after the fact if you wish. It is not a mandatory requirement to set up, set it up upfront. And it's usually only done if the customer's security and or installation requirements require a replica of the data store for DR purposes. Okay. We'll go for that. Once again, uh, note up here, it says agent installation options, right? So this is for the automatic install of the agent. So when it installed the agent, you wanted to not start the DPA agent and will you be using it to monitor Oracle databases, right? Um, the top one I, is almost never used. You always want your agent started, right? The second one, is if you're going to use this agent to collect Oracle RMAN data, then it would need to know the path of the Oracle client software. Okay. If you don't know it, or if you're unsure, not a problem, stick to the default. You can always modify the agent after the fact to put that in. Okay. So to configure the agent, the agent needs to know which application server it's going to talk to. And you can see it's automatically folded in because that's what we put in for the data store access as well. And so that is correct. All 
right? Then it's going to ask you for a data store password. So set a password and remember it. You need to remember it because when you install the DPA application server, it's going to ask you for that password, right? Now, this is an agent password. So there's an agent password that needs to be set for secure communications between the agent and the application server, right? You can set it to the same password if you'd like, or choose a different one. This is usually up to the customer. We give the customer the flexibility and control to set whatever passwords they want for security purposes. Right, and then the installation is complete. That's how quick it is to install the DPA data store. When the installer is done and you get your prompt returned, you can go to the installer install path and you can see under services under logs there's a data store log there so if you tail that you'll see various messages startup messages because this is still brand new there's a couple of other messages there in, in there for you to look at as well if you wish but it is how do we know that it is up and running we can go to the bin directory and do a DPA SVC status or DS status, right? So it's now telling you that the data store service is running and the agent service is running. So we're ready. Cool. So now we switch over to our DPA application server. Yep, and almost exactly the same. I'm going to SU. Oh, before I do that, let's do an X host plus first. Then we will SU to into get root access. And export point display. Go to the temp directory where I have my installer file. Give it execute permissions and then run it. And I want the graphical installer. Right, so if you run the, uh, the installer on Windows, the graphical installer prompts will look almost identical. Right, so even if you're doing it on Windows, your prompts would be, all be exactly the same. Right, there's your introduction. There's your EULA, which you need to accept. The default install folder, keeping it there at the same. And this time I'm installing an application service. Right, there are advanced installation options. I'll select it for now just so that you can see what they are, but I'm not going to use any. Right. So, for example, you don't want to register the service, don't start the service, um, install the DPA services as clusterable. Like I said, a very, very small handful of customers do that. Do not use that as a starting point. Just stick to a plain DPA data store, DPA app server and start from there. Right. Install services under administrative account. Run the application and agent services under a different admin account if you so wish, right? I'm not going to do that here. So enter a user account to run the services. Um, I'm going to default to root. And of course it will warn you, say so sure. And there's the installation summary.
right? And now it's going to ask you the converse. What data store will I be talking to, right? So, 60, 50. Right, there's the agent installation options. If you want to use any of those, so, uh, same option for the Oracle database. If you need to, not going to do that. Um, this is for the agent that's being installed on the app server itself. So it's going to communicate to itself. This is why this is localhost. Okay. Now, in order to communicate with the data store, it needs to know the data store pass that we had set when we installed the data store. So just make sure they're the same. And we'll actually check and verify. If it doesn't work, it will come back to you with an error. This is the administrator password. So for the DPA user interface login, the administrator login, what do you want the password to be? Okay, there are minimum password rules, as you can see, for all of these passwords. Once set, we can go yes. And then once again, the DPA application server we automatically install an agent. Same thing, this agent needs to communicate to the app server using a secure password. The same secure password, right? So all the agents must be using the same secure password to talk to the app server. Go. So in, an, another, in another snippet, I will show you how to install a standalone DPA agent. And when you do that, you will need to know what this agent password is as well, right? So the agent password is set on the app server. This is what the agent communication password is. And all your agents, when connecting to the app server, needs to know what that password is as well to ensure a successful established connection. go done right so similar similar to our previous if you wanted to check you can go into the install directory and the services bin and you can check its status right so because I have a new window, I need to go back into Roots. Okay. And then you'll see that the application service is starting and the agent service is running. So starting means the application server is still busy instantiating, as in it is still busy uh, starting up. If you had to launch a brand new UI to it, to it you, you'll actually see that it starts up but it's telling you I'm still waiting I'm still starting it gives you a progress bar and an estimated uh, total time and elapsed time before it completes right and it gives you an, an idea of where it is in the install process So whilst that is doing its thing, you can also have a look at the applications folder. 
So without the UI, if you just want to check from a command line point of view, you would look at this applications folder. Each of these files should have a dot deployed at the end, which means a successful deployment. Okay. If I go back to my browser, you'll see now it's prompting me and I can test if it's worked successfully by logging in. And there it is. You, and there is the automatic new install eval license for 19 day, 90 days, fully functional, no restrictions whatsoever. Okay. And of course it starts you off with a setup guide. What do you do next? Enter a license key if you have it. Set passwords for default users. Install data collection agents. Run the discovery wizard in the UI and other things that you might want to do, right? So it guides the customer, guides the installer what to do next. All right. And initially, because there's no data in the database yet, these would be blank, right? So from here, you would install your agents. Uh, then you would go through the discovery wizard to define all the objects into DPA, your network of servers, Avamar servers, data domain, and so forth. But that is DPA installation in a nutshell. It is far quicker to do this than to import an OVA, I can assure you. Well, thank you for that. Enjoy.